quick tutorials. We don't waste time. In the video world, you have two groups of people. DSLR, yeah, right. How are you supposed to get great audio out of your video camera? Then on the other end of the spectrum, oh god, I am such an artist. Look at this insane depth of field work on this video I took of some bushes. I live in here. I used to live in here until I tried out a DSLR. And in this world, I've learned there's two more groups of people. The ones who have no idea what they're doing and use kit lens on everything, and the ones who are simply too fucking fancy to not work with exclusively primes. I would always argue the case of the zoom lens, so I've decided to run some tests since I have both. Before we start, let's get one thing clear. The glass is very, very important. Do not use the kit lens if you can afford otherwise and expect great results. I will admit that for a very long time I was in favor of a quality zoom lens, and I was wrong. I ran some tests myself with a Sigma 24-70mm 2.8 zoom and a 30mm 1.4 Sigma, and that's a prime. And the results blew me away. Make sure to watch this in 1080p to really see what I'm talking about here. Because when you're debuting your short film or recent work, you want to make sure that that mount in the background is slightly more in focus to really drive your story home. And we all know how quickly an audience can be turned away when the crosshairs on the button of your lawn chair aren't as clear as they really could be. Let me remind you that that's uh, three times the resolution of normal 1080p video that will probably be dumbed down to 360p when your grandma watches it on her computer. Here's what this amounts to, and I've said it before, and this is going to piss off a lot of people. Primes are a pain in the ass when you're using them on the spot. Switching lenses isn't an option in some cases, and it's not worth it to please some fart sniffer on a blog somewhere. Even when you do have the time, you have to keep switching lenses and scooting the tripod around, and it's really like, it's like, it's just dumb. Don't be that guy. My 24-70mm zoom lens has done a magnificent job of everything, and I can do a really cool fast zoom with it too. But I did spend 500 bucks on the thing. Canon's version is like 1300 bucks or some crazy shit like that. But the point is my lens costed money. And it's not so much about prime or zoom, it's more about the quality of the glass. There's great zooms and there's a lot of really shitty zoom. And then there's good primes and there's a lot of really medium primes. I will say that zooms go shittier than primes do though, if that makes sense. Canon L series are super great. Sigma is my favorite because they're great and they're well priced. What I don't recommend is Dokina 18 to 350 f 3.5 to, to 9.2 or, or some crazy ass enormous range. You don't want a huge range with varying aperture because when you zoom all the way out, the brightness completely changes and it, it, it'll really screw your shot up. It's usually marketed towards a novice who gets excited about seeing a 12 to 500 millimeter range. 24 to 70 2.8 is good. 24 to 105 f4 is even good. That's a Canon. 50 to 500 Sigma is an exception because it's a Sigma and they come out good. But most of the time, they're going to suck, especially if they're like 100 bucks too. If you can't afford something fancy, start with a 50 millimeter f1.8 Canon. It's only 100 bucks. It was super handy when I first started, but I do always recommend the Sigma 24 to 70. It's like 500 bucks. It works on a 5D body full frame as well as a crop sensor on a T3i or a 7D. And it's just really pretty. I mean, look at it. Anyway, I'll post some sample footage up of each later. This has been a quick tutorial. My name is Alex Harris.